Um, prayer is a powerful thing. This is a little booklet that I wrote several years ago. When did I write it? Oh, 2007. I guess it was a few more than several years ago. Since it's now 2019. <laughs> This, look at this quote from Dr. O.C. Smith. This is from Dr. O.C. Smith in 2001. He was my minister and my mentor until he left this planet for that greater adventure on the other side of life. He said, this is a how to move through teaching. We teach people how to move through whatever is going on in their life. Our approach to God and prayer is of utmost importance. It's what we're reading in this book prayer is a powerful thing. Our approach to God in prayer is of utmost importance and will determine whether or not our prayers are effective. Many of us come from a traditional religious experience and have been taught to pray to a God far away in the heavens, but the mastermind Jesus taught us to go into the closet, that is to shut out the world, and pray to our Father in quiet confidence knowing that he knows our needs before we ask. Why? Because the Father is spirit, Jesus said. And so our spirit recognizes that greater spirit, even sometimes when we, don't, we aren't conscious of it. Jesus demonstrated his teachings in his work, not his words. So as we learn from his example, we can build a conviction in our mind that the good that we desire is God's desire for us. It can be no other way. Can we approach God in confidence, trusting that God desires for us the good that we seek? No. Then we must examine our beliefs about God and create a new understanding of our relationship with God. Think about those words from St. Francis. St. Francis of Assisi said, I have been all things unholy. I have been all things unholy. If God can work through me, he can work through anyone. I have been all things unholy. If God can work through me, he can work through anyone. Well, that's an amazing thing. And just remember those words from the mastermind Jesus. It rains in the good and the bad alike. What more do we need to know? In other words, God's blessings are not bestowed on us because we are good, Jesus said. Don't call me good, only the Father is good. Neither are we to call ourselves good, for the good that we do is God's Spirit working through us, as us, and for us. Do we call ourselves bad or a sinner? If we do, then we are denying God, for in the book of Genesis we can read that we are created in the image and likeness of God. And all that God created was good and very good. So this is the truth that we must realize in our consciousness in order to pray powerfully, without doubting, and without questioning whether God or our prayer is going to give us a good result. We must begin to accept that God loves us as much as we can love ourselves. So that's why it's so important as we learned in our message earlier tonight, that we must love ourselves 100%. Love ourselves 100%. Love the blemishes of past experiences. Love the things that cause us to think, what in the heaven was I thinking when I did that? Love all those things. They were a part of us. And to realize that who we are is greater than any physical experience we may have. Who we are is greater than anything that we've done in this world. And that our greatness has even greater things still to be expressed in this world in which we live. So as we learn and accept our basic relationship with God and from the Spirit, we are then empowered to take dominion and authority over our earthbound condition. And once again, going back to the book of Genesis, we learned that we are created in the image and likeness of God. Now we know this does not mean our physical body, because if it did, we would all look alike. <coughs> Excuse me. So we realize that this image and likeness is spirit and life, 
and we image God by reflecting God, the qualities of God. Mystics have revealed to us the qualities of God, which is life and love and light and peace and harmony and joy and strength. Notice they're all invisible. We don't know if somebody's a loving person. We don't know if somebody carries the light of truth. We don't know if someone's peaceful or they have a, a life of harmony or feel a sense of joy or have strength of character until we see what they do. Because these are the great unseen. These are the things of God. And that's why this infinite presence that we can't see but we can know it's just as powerful as the things that we see are more powerful, I should, I should say, than the things that we can see. Just like gravity can't be seen, we can't draw a picture of gravity, but we believe in gravity, do we not? Nature is powerful. We can't draw a picture of all of nature. It's too infinite, but we believe in it. We believe in his power. So that message of Jesus has even a greater meaning today, just as the Buddha and Krishna, Isaiah, all these people gave us this greater truth. Go to the book of Psalms, go to the book of Proverbs. Read all those wonderful words that will inspire you and give you an aspiration to bring forth your greater imagination to live your life in a greater way, a more joyful way, a more loving way, a more peaceful way. Be at peace with who you are. Be at peace with your past, present, and future. Always remember and never forget that mankind reflects God. You and I reflect God. Just like a mirror reflects our image, we are reflecting the Spirit of God in all that we are and all that we do. We might not think we are, but every time we make a choice, we're using the power of God. Every time we take a thought in our mind, we're using the intelligence of God, even though to the world that may not seem so intelligent what we are. Just imagine how things work. This is from the book, once again, from the book, Prayer is a Powerful Thing, Powerful Effective Prayer. This is my book. I wrote it in 2007, we're in 2019, so that's 12 years ago, I received a call from a young woman who was down to no money, no job. She didn't even have the money to buy cat food for her cat. Her mind was in turmoil. Now, this is a woman who has faithfully attended church on a regular basis. She knows how to pray, and she had been praying but she told me she was feeling so much fear it was difficult for her to pray. Now, I knew that she had been having this experience for a few years, not just this one time, but this had become a repetitive experience in her life, a habit, you could say, but definitely a pattern of thought that must be stopped, that must be stopped. I asked her to think about the fear. Was she really feeling fear? After all, she had been in this situation several times over the past couple of years, and every time she had made it to the other side of the problem. So after thinking for a few moments, she told me that it probably wasn't fear, but she, was, she just didn't like being in this position again. So behind the statement is shame and guilt, not fear, but there is no shame and no reason to feel guilty when we approach God. God wants us to turn to God. The infinite spirit that created everyone that we see individualized its own life image in each and every one of us wants our attention. Remember those words of Jesus. The Father is spirit. Spirit. And we must worship him in spirit and in truth. What does worship mean? To give our attention to. To give our trust to. 
So behind her statement was shame and guilt, not fear. But there is no shame and no reason to feel guilty when we approach God. God wants us to turn to God. In the book of Isaiah, we can read, I am the Lord, and there is none other. What does Lord mean? It means the law and the love of God. Thou shalt have no Savior but me. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. God wants us to recognize our oneness with God and know that God responds to us, corresponds to our every thought, our every idea about ourselves. So I ask this woman to take her time to realize the strength of God moving through her mind, her heart, and her soul, and to let herself feel the joy of knowing she was living in the present and God was present for her.